Happy Halloween, my friends. I hope that you all had a fantastic weekend. But before you get to trick-or-treating tonight, well, we've got some politics to talk about. And the first story of the day is the attempted assassination attempt on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Although we don't yet have a motive from the attacker, we do know that he was a far-right winger. He was a subscriber of QAnon, a Holocaust denier. He celebrated Kanye West's anti-Semitic remarks. So this is an individual who was very clearly looking to harm the Speaker of the House. But the response from the right is to essentially lie about his intent and also laugh and joke about it, even though Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, is currently in the ICU fighting for his life after suffering blunt force trauma to his head and body. And I'm not going to say that I'm surprised by the response from right wingers because they lie and conspiracy monger about everything. So why should this story be different? But the lengths that they're going, how low they're going is even surprising to someone like me who has zero faith in the right in the United States. Now, to be clear, they have to lie about this because this makes them look bad. Their rhetoric has become increasingly violent. They have become increasingly unhinged and fascistic. I'm talking about elected members of Congress, conspiracy mongering about everything, targeting marginalized groups, pretending as if there is this elitist cabal of child blood drinking psychopath Satanists who are controlling the levers of power. So, I mean, it's not surprising that you see one of their deranged followers do something like this, but because this makes them look bad, well, they're trying to lie and obfuscate. So we're going to talk about the response from the right. But first, look at what Charlie Kirk had to say on his show this morning. Why is the Republican Party, why is the conservative movement to blame for gay schizophrenic nudists that are hemp jewelry makers breaking into somebody's home or maybe not breaking into somebody's home. Why are we to blame for that exactly? And why is he still in jail? Why has he not been bailed out? By the way, if some, if some amazing patriot out there in San Francisco or the Bay Area wants to really be a midterm hero, someone should go and bail this guy out. I bet his bail is like 30 or 40,000 bucks. Bail him out and then go ask him some questions. Hilarious. Isn't this story just so funny? Somebody was almost killed after an intruder broke into their house trying to assassinate one of the leaders of the opposition party. And it's just so funny. Somebody would be a patriot if they bailed this individual out and confirmed their conspiracy narrative. Now, first of all, he is being held without bail. And Charlie Kirk is questioning the official narrative there. And you saw him reference a conspiracy theory that was shared by Elon Musk, who is now the owner of Twitter. So he wrote this in a deleted response to Hillary Clinton, where he says there is a tiny possibility there might be more to this story than meets the eye. And he linked to an article that alleges that Paul Pelosi was assaulted after getting into a dispute with a male prostitute who he was believed to have engaged in intercourse with. Now, on top of that, Trump Jr. shared this picture of underwear and a hammer to Instagram saying, got my Paul Pelosi Halloween costume ready. Again, he's talking about an 82 year old man who is in the ICU currently fighting for his life. I'm no fan of the Pelosi's. I've condemned Nancy Pelosi multiple times on this program, but I don't believe in doing political violence, whereas the right apparently does. Can you imagine if this happened to Donald Trump? If somebody broke into Trump's house and did something heinous like this or broke into Marjorie Taylor Greene's house and did something like this and the response from a leftist blogger or something was to share this joke. Oh, hey, this is my Halloween costume. LOL. Hilarious. Like the right would be justifiably upset because that's disgusting. But here they're just joking about it and within 24 hours concocting new conspiracy theories based on nothing. It just... Just when you think that they can't get any lower, they surprise everyone. Now, David DePape, who was the individual who broke into the Pelosi home and attacked Paul Pelosi, is not a gay prostitute, nor was he the gay lover of Paul Pelosi. This individual, as I stated earlier, is a Holocaust-denying QAnon believer 
who's a far right winger who grew increasingly unhinged over the course of the last couple of years. And this Los Angeles Times article breaks it down if you want to read more about him. But in a summary by Del Cameron of Gizmodo, he explains Pelosi's attacker is a Trump supporter who watches Tim Pool, reads Ben Shapiro and revels in Kanye's attack on the Jews. He's a Q adherent who believes white Americans are oppressed and under attack, a conspiracy mainstreamed by Fox News and YouTube. And he also reportedly yelled, where is Nancy Pelosi? Because he was trying to target her. And as the Associated Press and Law and Crime reports, he brought zip ties, presumably so he can hold them hostage once he found them. So this is somebody who has been radicalized by propagandists like Charlie Kirk, by Fox News. And now, because they don't want to take responsibility for their extremism, well, the easiest thing for them to do is lie and just laugh it off. See, it's funny because what happened, the official narrative, isn't actually true. And really, this is just Paul Pelosi getting in a, a gay dispute with his gay prostitute lover. They will never take responsibility for their actions, ever. Now, as Ben Collins of NBC News reports, police say on the record that Paul Pelosi and his suspected attacker did not know each other prior to the attack. It was a break in. This directly contradicts conspiracy theories pushed by and since deleted by Twitter owner Elon Musk. Now, the same people who are laughing about this assassination attempt of Nancy Pelosi are the same folks who were clutching their pearls over the summer when protesters were protesting outside of Supreme Court justices' homes. And do you remember when a guy turned himself in claiming that he wanted to assassinate Brett Kavanaugh? How many conspiracy theories floated around on the left and from liberals? How many of them immediately tried to pretend as if, well, that was just a gay lover of Brett Kavanaugh. That was, you know, somebody who was a right winger. It was the Proud Boys. Nobody on the left or the center said that. Everybody denounced that because I think that logical people know that as insufferable as our political system is, seeing political violence and assassinations of political leaders isn't going to make things better. It's only going to further de destabilize our country and hurt democracy. So everyone on the left condemned the assassination attempt or the man who turned himself in saying that he wanted to harm Brett Kavanaugh. But yet with the right, they can't bring themselves to do the bare minimum and just say, wow, this is bad. Perhaps we should all tone down the rhetoric. They're not even both sides in it. They're just lying and making up conspiracy theories about what happened. Now, again, the motive is not yet known, but given the details here, Occam's Razor tells us that this man broke into their home after getting radicalized and he wanted to assassinate Nancy Pelosi, who is someone who the right has vilified for years now. Now, again, regardless of what they say, this is the direct result of right wing rhetoric. And this is the direct result of their violent rhetoric in the same way that Trump's rhetoric about the 2020 election led to the January 6th insurrection. So, I've said this once before on the show, I'll say it again. Bombastic, explosive rhetoric oftentimes has violent consequences. The right knows this. They can no longer feign ignorance and just, you know, oopsie daisy, didn't mean to, you know, radicalize someone to the point where they're literally trying to assassinate the opposition. But they're not even doing an oopsie daisy saying, oh, tee hee, did we radicalize this person? They're straight up just saying, mm, nope, don't believe it's true. This was a gay love affair gone wrong, apparently. It's sick. It's gross. But it just goes to show you, this is the response for everything. If something makes them look bad, rather than trying to grapple with the details and the facts, they just lie because that's what the right does in the United States. Are there any honest people on the right, not like elected officials, but just Republican voters who see this and they think, man, you know, I agree with them on policy, but perhaps the lies are a little bit too much. Of course not, because everyone is radicalized now, because to be a Republican is to be somebody who lives in their own plane of existence, their own reality sculpted for them by right wing media, by Donald Trump. So they're all in this weird cult mass delusion together. And it's bringing down the country, but they just genuinely don't care. They will lie and joke about anything. But in the event this happened to them, as I stated earlier, they would be outraged and they would be right to be outraged. But the left would never lie about something like that. We base our worldview on facts and data and statistics. 
and they base their worldviews on lies and conspiracy theories. And regardless of what they want to say, don't let them gaslight you. This is the result of their extremism. And unless we see facts that counter that claim, facts that counter their weird, uh, or, or confirm, I should say, their weird gay prostitute narrative, then this was just an assassination attempt on Speaker Pelosi. Obfuscating and lying doesn't change that fact. And unless we have more details and a clear motive from the individual, then I think it's logical to deduce that this person got radicalized and thought that he would be a right-wing hero by killing the Speaker of the House. Period. End of story. It's that simple. So Republicans are gross, and it just goes to show you how far they've fallen. Not that they've ever really had any ethical or moral standards, but like this just goes to show you that as Paul Pelosi is in the ICU, they're already joking about this and claiming that he had a dispute with a gay prostitute. They are genuinely unhinged and sick. And I don't know how we can go forward as a country with these types of people if they're willing to just brazenly lie and make things up like that. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.